it's Ron Brown with Tech for Senior. The holiday season is coming. We're going to be doing some shopping online. Let me show you some tips. In this video, I'm going to look at four websites, Amazon, Walmart, Best Buy, and Costco. I'm going to give you my opinion of the websites, show you some tips on saving money, and have a great time. Let's go shopping. Now, having just spent the past 10 years as a snowbird in Arizona, I've got some tips for those Canadian snowbirds heading south. Now in Canada, your Amazon website is Amazon.ca and in the United States, it's Amazon.com. Now your Prime membership in Canada is actually cheaper. It's $79 a year versus your Prime membership in the United States, which is $119 US. Now, while well in Canada, it's best to use the Amazon.ca website, and when you're in the United States, use the Amazon.com. So yes, I have two Amazon accounts, but that can get expensive. So while well in Canada, you only need to pay on a monthly basis. Your subscription can be, yes, a monthly fee. And in that, in Canada is $7.99 Canadian a month. So when you head south, simply change your account over and initiate your US account and you can pay $12.99. And a new feature I just saw is that if you just want Amazon Prime Video, you now have in the US an option of $8.99 a month just to get the Prime Video service. Now the confusing thing you're gonna find is when you sign on to your Amazon account, whether it's the .ca or the .com, you'll have a single sign-on and password. And that's confusing, but that's just the way it is. Now, you know the old thing about like and subscribe. If you like this video, please like it and please subscribe to our channel. It sure helps us make more videos like this. Amazon's total success has been on selling online on this web page. So what's the secret sauce that made this so successful? The magic actually occurs long before you ever get to access this page. It occurs in the week before. It occurs in all the places you go on the internet. Amazon has a very sophisticated tracking systems and it knows what you're probably going to want to look at before you actually get to the page based on your activity on the internet for the past week. Now I always joke about I go to sleep and dream about something and it's deal of the day the next day on Amazon yes but it's sort of like that because Amazon gives you a very focused view of what you might want to purchase when you come to the site and that is the success of the Amazon site the second thing is of course the delivery and how does it get the products to you so fast well in my case I like coffee and I order a lot of coffee through Amazon and Amazon knows that. I get targeted sales trying to sell me coffee, which is great because when I come every morning for my usual quick, let's have a look at Amazon for uh, 10 minutes, I get a very focused picture of things that I am interested in. So before a sale occurs, Amazon knows roughly how many people in that region are probably gonna buy that product. So in the case of coffee, they may move 50, 60,000 bags of coffee to Vancouver as a regional distribution center. And when I order it, boom, it comes the next day. So knowing what you want and getting it to you quickly is the secret sauce that Amazon uses. Two years ago, I did a video called Let's Go Shopping. I'll put the link down below and you can watch it again if you're interested. And in that, I analyzed the Walmart website and the Walmart app on your phone. I don't use Walmart's online site very much and was happy when I went back to review it for this video that they actually have made some pretty impressive changes. The main problem I have with Walmart's website is that it is not a focused website. And when I want to go and just spend five minutes quickly seeing what the deal of the day is or what I'm interested in, they don't have the same focused approach that Amazon has. 
Now that is getting better and I really like their recent changes they did on their site. The other problem I have is this is a very huge site with a lot of product. If you just search Chromebooks, you'll find over a thousand Chromebooks and they all have rollbacks and different pricing and great deals for you, but it's just so vast. It's hard to get focused into what you want. The other problem with the Walmart site is that a lot of the products are sold as third party. This is not obvious in many cases and often can cause problems with returns. So be very careful with that. I love Best Buy. I like their website and I like the company. Corey Berry has done an amazing job in restructuring this company and making it successful. But there was an article this year that said Best Buy is winning the competition against Amazon. And it's just a tiny company compared to the big giant. So you're going to see lots of greatness with Best Buy. I like their website. It's very focused. Uh, no problems at all. I had to buy a dishwasher this last month. I said to my wife, let's go and support the local guys first. So we went around to all the five appliance stores in our area. None of them had the Bosch dishwasher we wanted. It's amazing this whole supply shortage problem. Anyway, went back, looked at Best Buy, went online. The Bosch dishwasher we wanted was available and even had it in black and was delivered in 10 days. And it was on sale. Best Buy, I love you. Keep up the great work. Costco, I love you. I go to our local Costco store every Monday afternoon and do shopping. I've been a member for 27 years. I meet my friends at Costco. I have a great time at Costco. Costco, I love you, but your website sucks. Nothing I like about your website, including the Instacart promotion. I think Costco is a bricks and mortar store. Probably had some pressure recently to start an online service. I'm sure if Costco wants to be great at online service, they can do it, but they're not. And I avoid their website. All right, let's see if we can save you some money. This is a sale on a shark robotic vacuum. This is off the Canadian site. Of course, I get a focused experience because I'm interested in vacuums. So this actually is a very good deal, but how do you know that? I want to draw your attention to the price, the list price, which is listed as $6.99 and it's on sale for $3.99, a 43% reduction. Now, the first thing you have to understand is that the prices on Amazon vary daily, weekly, monthly. So they fluctuate greatly. So how do we know that this is really a retail price of $6.99? Well, let's have a look at that. So this is the best buy price, it's $4.99. And this is the Walmart price, at $5.49 with a list price of $6.99. All right, there are two extensions I would encourage you to use in your browser if you're doing online shopping at Amazon. Both these are exactly the same. They're free. For many years, I used one and it's called Camel, Camel, Camel. Recently, I've switched to another one called Keepa. I'll tell you that about that in just a minute. These are both free and track the pricing of Amazon products. Keepa is also an extension that tracks the pricing and works exactly the same as Camel, 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 but there's one advantage to it. It gives you the chart right in the search within Amazon. Let me show you how that looks. Here you'll see a search on the robotic vacuum and you'll see beneath the diagram the graph that Keepa has. So for this reason, I like Keep It better than Camel, 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 but again, they work exactly the same and are free extensions for your browser. This is the historical pricing chart on that vacuum cleaner. This was produced by Keepa. And if you look at the solid blue line that you'll see on the graph, it indicates the price fluctuations over the past year. And you'll also note that is the best deal at present. There's a little purple X as well on the graph indicating warehouse deals, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. 
But this is a good example of how you can see what the historical pricing is on this particular product. You also can toggle all the other options on the right hand side to look at different pricing. Now here's how you can save some money. I want you to look down at the right side under the new and used items. Let's see what we can do with this. All right, let's look under the new and used section. When we focus in, you'll see that the first item under the like new is for $315. This is a very good deal and can save you a lot of money. Who sells this? Well, this is from Prime Time Express. Well, what's their track record? We don't know. Uh, and the, in fact, the site was just launched. This may be a very good deal. Let's move down one more. This can also be purchased from a company called Saver Plus. This is used or like new and it is for $329. A little bit more. Uh, this has an excellent track record. It has a four star rating uh, with 169 reviews. This would be a good bet. You should, you're pretty much assured that's going to be a very good company to deal with. <clears throat> but I want you to look over on the right side now and you'll see, let's come down to the 359, the used or very good. This is also a saving at 359. And this is sold by Amazon as a warehouse deal. Now I purchase almost all my Amazon products if there is a warehouse deal on them through the warehouse. Uh, it takes a little bit longer to get, but in most cases, this comes as a brand new item. Uh, it comes with a complete warranty from Amazon, and you can certainly return it if you're not happy with it. This is an excellent way to save money, and I always buy the warehouse deals. It's Ron Brown, Tips for Shopping. I'm Huey Poplock. Today we're going to talk about the Internet Archive. The Internet Archive is a nonprofit library of millions of free books, movies, software, music, websites, and more. Brewster Kale, founder and digital librarian of the Internet Archive, is a passionate advocate for public interest access and a successful entrepreneur. Brewster Kale has spent his career intent on a singular focus, providing universal access to all knowledge. He is the founder and digital librarian of the Internet Archive, one of the largest libraries in the world. Kale is a member of the National Academy of Engineering, American Academy of Arts and Sciences, and the Internet Hall of Fame. In general, there's 70 plus unique petabytes of data that's 70 million gigabytes. 65 plus million public media items, text, movies, audio, images, and so on. 1.5 million unique website users per day, and 17,000 uploads from users per day. And this is from figures from the year 2020. The Wayback Machine, which I'm going to talk about next week, has 588 billion web pages. Archive it as 49 billion curated URLs captured in 14,000 collections. Books, there are 28 million texts in the collection, books, documents, magazines, and so on. 4.6 million books digitized by Internet Archive. 3,500 books digitized per day in 18 digitization centers worldwide. Under television, there's 2 million news programs available for closed caption search. Movies, there's 4 million movie items, not including television programs. Under audio, there's 14 million audio items, including 220,000 live music concerts from 8,000 bands. And there's 200,078 RPM sides digitized. Under software, there's 580,000 software titles, many emulatable through a web browser, and there's about 3.5 million images. You can see there are top collections at the archive, and if you scroll, you'll scroll for pages and pages. We're just going to take a snapshot of a few of them. These are top collections at the archive. We're going to choose movies for the first one. 
There's 83,057 items in this category. Watch full-length feature films, classic shorts, world culture documentaries, World War II propaganda, movie trailers, and films created in just 10 hours. These options are all featured in this diverse library. We're going to choose comedy films. There's 292 items in that, and I've chosen the Charlie Chaplin's Good for Nothing. When you click on it, you'll see that it is listed there with all of his movies that are available through this archive. This is the Internet Archive Radio Collection, a widely diverse and massive collection of radio station recordings, broadcast captures, and radio shows and programs and more. One of the most historically important artifacts to come from the home computer telecommunications revolution were shareware CDs, compact discs, put out by companies containing hundreds of megabytes of shareware. Some computer bulletin board services would attach banks of CD-ROM drives to their machine to allow users to access the disks, allowing the system operators or sysops to claim the BBSs had thousands of files available. My BBS was one of those. I had over eight CDs available for my users to search and download. CD makers would declare their CDs BBS ready, meaning an easily readable directory of file descriptions was located on the CDs to be read by the BBS software. The wide collection of trailers and shows, recordings and other captures on VHS tape are in this collection. The classic TV programs from the late 40s and 50s, commercials and more, titles like Your Hit Parade, The Perry Como Show, Howdy Doody, and the many westerns of the day. The Canadian Libraries page, uh, the Toronto Scanning Center was established in 2004 on the campus of the University of Toronto. From its humble beginnings, Internet Archive Canada has worked with more than 250 institutions in providing their unique materials with open access and sharing these collections with the world over. From the archives of the Sisters of Service of the University of Alberta, IAC has digitized more than 600,000 unique texts as of September 2019. Here's what the Internet's Archives Tabletop Scribe Book Scanner looks like. And here is a picture of volunteers helping scan the materials. The Internet Archive. I'm Huey Poplock. Fishing, the tip of the iceberg. From big companies to individuals, phishing affects everyone in today's digital world. Day after day, we see news about new cyber attacks, data breaches, yet another ransomware attack, and so on. Phishing is one of the most popular attack vectors, and unfortunately, its use has increased over time. According to a recent report published by the Anti-Phishing Working Group, which Avast is a sponsor of, the second quarter of 2022 was the worst quarter for phishing ever observed. My thanks to Louis Garones for his article on this topic and the information for this video. Please read his article at the link listed. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and get involved. Essentially, phishing is when someone sends you a link or an email that looks like it comes from a legitimate source, but actually leads to a fake website. Phishing sites look very convincing and are designed to trick people. They can be hosted on a real website and even look like an official message from a bank, social network, or other organization. The person who sends you the phishing link or email wants you to trust them and enter your personal information. This information is then used by the person sending the fishy message to commit identity theft. Once attackers have obtained the victim's identity, they have an open field of abuse. They can lock you out of your online accounts, target your contacts, or pretend to be you to commit further crimes. As seen in the image above, cybercriminals use fear and urgency to force users to make rash decisions. 
That's why many phishing emails usually refer to some threat, a claim that your account will be blocked or deleted or an unauthorized access has been detected. Cybercrime has become a mature industry. Attackers are getting more sophisticated, with different players specialized in different tasks. From stealing credentials to laundering money, having phishing kits for sale has become a reality, and this trend is similar to what we've seen in other areas such as ransomware, where there are groups that create a platform in exchange for a percentage of the ransom obtained. Recently, our team has been studying Evil Proxy, a phishing service that allows untrained cyber criminals to run phishing campaigns capable of bypassing two-factor authentication. From the social engineering perspective, the improvements are also evident. Even for a trained eye, it's sometimes truly difficult to distinguish a phishing message from a real one. On top of that, these attacks target the victim using his native language on various platforms. For instance, a phishing by SMS, also known as smishing, has become quite popular and works in the same way. This image above shows a fraudulent SMS targeting customers of Spanish bank Banco Santander. Phishing now affects everyone in today's digital world. Fortunately, protection against phishing attempts have increased due to increased awareness of these scams. However, not all users are aware of how to spot phishing sites and thus aren't equipped to avoid giving away sensitive information. While browsers and security solutions include phishing protection, their effectiveness may vary and there are not many independent testing labs running phishing tests. AV Comparatives is one of those few running comparative anti-phishing certification tests. Take a look by following the link listed. Here are some tips for protecting yourself against phishing scams. Don't click on any attachments which can install harmful malware. Don't click on any links, especially if the email urges you to go to a website and provide any information. Don't reply to suspicious email or use a phone number or other contact information in the email. Look closely at the sender's email address and any web address in the email for deviations from the official name or the business or sender. If you're using personal email and a message claims a business is urgently trying to reach you, you can call or reach out to the business by looking up contact information online. Do not use any contact information provided in the suspicious email. Use two-factor authentication and consider changing your email password and any other related passwords. Stay safe, stay secure, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.